Today's video we're going to take a peek at the Yezu YO-100 monitor scope and what a monitor scope is it's basically just a simple oscilloscope that is uh, used to monitor radio RF transmissions from like your ham radio or CB radio and uh, you can look at your single and see if it's flat topping or or how the thing was peaking. This one belongs to a friend of mine over in the next county. He sent it over this weekend and uh, he had turned it on one day and he saw smoke roll out of it so we're going to take it apart and have a look at it and see if we can fix it. I have the Kenwood SM220 that I use from time to time especially when I'm changing the RF finals in a amateur radio that uses solid state finals and once you uh, set the bias and stuff on the transistor you can go back and look at the single and, and really fine tune it and uh, get it looking better that way you have a clean single going out on the air so uh, since he saw smoke roll out of it, we're going to take Dave's suggestion. Don't turn it on and take it apart. And uh, we'll see what we can find wrong with this thing. Uh, remove all the screws and pull the case off of it. And if you look inside, you can see that we have four smaller tubes. Um, the transformer, filter capacitor, and the old crow. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is have a look at this transformer and see if we see any signs of uh, smoke or any burnt spots on it. And what I like to do is look around where the uh, windings are and see if I see anything burnt. As you can see, I don't see nothing that looks like the transformer has smoked out, so that's always a uh, a good sign. My Kenwood, uh, a couple of years ago, had a major failure and completely smoked the transformer out. And it took me over a year to find a replacement. I thought I was going to have to end up hand winding it myself, but uh, I got lucky and, and found one. So let's flip it over see what we see. As you can see we basically got two power supplies that run this. This looks like the high voltage. Should be around 1200 volts on the CRT. When working on this old stuff, you can always use your five senses instead of grabbing a bunch of test equipment. You know, you can look at it and smell around and uh, you'd be surprised at the things you can find. And if you notice, it has a lot of these oil field caps in here. They're 0 0.1 microfarads at 600 volts. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm starting to see something here. There is a wire here burning too. Let me uh, get a better view of it. Okay, I have traced the orange wire, and this is the uh, socket that goes to the back of the CRT. And the orange wire comes right up here to pin 10. So, this gives us what I'm going to call a landmark. Um, to help trace this out on the schematic. If you're not very familiar with uh, 
how different things are built. You know, with newer technology, we got a silk screen on the board and all the components are labeled. Well, if you have a, a correct service manual, it'll tell you what a lot of the parts are. We do not have a service manual for the Y0100. So this gives us a landmark to look at on the schematic to find out where pin 10 is going to and what circuit is connected. Okay, I've loaded, located pin 10 from the connector here. So this is showing this horizontal plate on the CRT. And we'll follow this over. You see it comes here and it branches off two different ways. Goes through a .001 cap and into this five position switch. And then it comes up and comes back around and goes to antenna in and out port. So that gives us a real good location of where we need to go. So what we need to do is follow this point down. Zoom in on that just a little bit. Come on, get in there. Okay, here, when it comes down, we can see that there's a 47K resistor here. And there's another 47K resistor here. So this should be our burnt resistor, should be one of these two 47K resistors. So we can see on the back of the unit we have a five position switch. And what this is is an attenuator switch. And that attenuates the RF input coming into the, uh, the unit. And from the switch we have this .001 cap going right down to the end of our 47k resistor so as you can see here that's a 47k resistor here and this is our orange wire that's blue the yellow wire is our 0.001 cap so the resistor here that is blown should also be a 47k resistor so then if we take the red wire We now can follow it to see where this went to and see if we can figure out what caused our circuit to blow that resistor. Now we could say since this is hooked up to the input that someone had this hooked up to a high power amplifier and the single went in and went through the attenuation capacitors and through the point .001 cap and into the circuit and blow the resistor. That is a possibility. However, I would think it would have took out this point .001. So, if you look down further, I think we might be able to find some other problem. So when we look down, we know that the circuit board that this is going to is PB1272. So, as we look through our I think the first thing we go through this in line with that 47k resistor is a 0.1 microfarad cap and these are oil fuel caps so it's possible that something there has shorted and it's caused a problem to blow out that resistor so following this red wire that came from the 47k resistor it goes directly to this capacitor which goes to ground so uh Let's give that capacitor a test and see what we find. All right, we'll do this little capacitor test and see what we come up with. Well, we're showing it as a resistor. 46.1 ohm. So we can pretty much figure out that that's probably what's caused the, uh, that circuit to short out. So we're going to replace that cap install a new resistor and repair the burnt wire and see what we get. So as you can see the capacitor we removed is a 0.01 microfarad at 600 volts. These capacitors are non-polarized 
but also remember that uh, when you're installing these you need to find the correct way to install them and I'll link in a video to uh, that Paul did at uh, Mr. Carson's lab that shows you how to find the correct polarity of these capacitors so if we look at it this way this being our non-polarized capacitor this will be the side that ties the ground and this will be to the B plus when we connect it in the right way this puts the ground on the outer shell of the capacitor and the voltage on the inside of the foil if it was the other way around and this insulation on the capacitor gets nicked and someone reaches down and grabs it they could get a nice little bite because it could be anywhere from two to five you know 500 volts on the 600 volt capacitor so we need to make sure that it is installed the correct way like I said I'll leave a link to uh, Paul's video to show you how to find the correct way to install your capacitors okay so I got all the uh, burnt components out I've replaced the capacitor down here with an orange capacitor, it's a spray capacitor and here we have our orange wire repair have a new 47k resistor put in so now it's time to do a test and see what happens okay so let's power it on and see what we get oh we have a trace horizontal set the focus get the trace set about right I got a radio connected up to it and we'll key the mic and we're showing an RF carrier test one two one two audio check one two test 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 one two okay and as you can see uh, the display is responding to our RF carrier and our audio so I'm pretty happy about that all we changed was two components and replaced a burnt wire and got that scope back up and running I am going to suggest to the owner to go ahead and replace all those little oil fill caps to orange drop capacitors he's a very good technician anyway he just dropped this off and wanted me to do the repair for him to get it back working so I think he can handle changing out the caps and uh, making sure everything works pretty well I basically did this video in real time um, only stopping the video to change the the parts out and to move and position the camera and I've done that for a reason I wanted to show you that sometimes you know having a lot of test equipment is nice to to have and you know, have at your convenience but a lot of times you can fix electronic component by just by using your senses you know looking for problems um, if it's not a high voltage problem you can feel around touch IC chips look for you know signs of heat um, you can hear things going on. You can definitely hear something sizzling or popping. And you can smell if anything has been burnt. And you can sniff around on the board and find all kind of nice little things that's been crispy barbecued. So uh, I'm going to conclude this video with this. And I hope you enjoyed it. It was just a quick little repair, didn't take long, and uh, as you saw it, you saw it in real time, so what you saw is what I saw. Um, no editing or anything other than just, you know, stopping the video to move things around. And I'll leave the link to Paul's video um, on all your capacitors installed backwards. That'll help you out if you haven't seen that. And, you know, and learning electronics can be very complicated to some folks but I suggest to uh, 
watch more of Paul's videos at Mr. Carson Lab. Check out Peter's at TRX Bench. And look for Alan at W2AEW. All good videos to help you learn and uh, show you how to do things without spending a lot of time on uh, trial and error. So, you know, that's all to help you. Anyway, we'll catch you next time. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you again.